the notion of character bleeds right into stewardship. And, I, and I've been making this distinction for the last week, and some of you have been around uh, and hearing some of these lectures, so mea culpa, mea culpa, maxima culpa for repeating myself. But I didn't use the word stewardship for a long time because I thought it too closely associated with the word uh, being a good shepherd. And I want to honor that metaphor in Christianity. I really do, and I don't want to denigrate that. But when you really think about it, what's the job of a shepherd? To take care of sheep. But what's the ultimate purpose of taking care of those sheep? To slaughter them. And I don't want leadership associated with that kind of negative import. And then I came upon, and it wasn't even Google, Anthony, it was in a book called a dictionary. And I think undergraduates may find this a fascinating discovery. But nevertheless, and, and that, the, that the root word for stewardship is steward, and steward means in Old English to be a manager for others, to be an agent of others. That's what I think leadership is about. It's not about the individual. It is about, uh, uh, it's about who the individual serves as leader. And so I think leadership is never about uh, the leader. It is about the people they serve. Hence, the quote from St. Augustine, the first and the last job of leadership is to serve the needs and well-being of the people they lead, is to be of service to the people they lead. Now, there's always this contradiction uh, when it comes to leadership. Well, people are ambitious to be leaders, but shouldn't we all be ambitious to do well that with, the, our, with our talents, to perform our tasks uh, with some proficiency. I want to be a good nurse. I want to be a good doctor. I want to be a good teacher. I have an obligation to write lectures, to be prepared. Isn't the worst professor you ever had the person that came in and said, where were we last time? <laughs> and could, show me that page. Let, let me read that to you again. You know? uh, is, don't we all want to be good at our crafts? And I think leadership wants to be good at its craft. And I think you have to be, you want to be, an, your ambition is to be a good leader. Your ambition is not to be called leader. I've given you the Drucker quote. Let me offer you a much more pedestrian quote from, from Tony Dungy, a, a coach in American football, which has nothing to do with your football or even close to Aussie rules. Um, but it, it's, it's a, in America, it's a love sport. He said, I learned very quickly when I became a coach that, the, my, that my real and only job was to help the team. Otherwise, I was gone. Now, I think um, ethical leadership comes down to character with characters. And what, characters, uh, what, uh, and what characteristics does an individual have? And I think characters with characters really give us the, I think, essential element of leadership. That characters with character offer constituents trust, the commitment of trust. And let me talk about that for a while. My friend Robert Solomon has argued that the success of leadership in business or commercial life or in a community is directly dependent on the level of trust in any society. He maintains that trust is a precondition for civil society. Trust is an essential virtue and that all relationships require trust. Like Aristotle, he maintains that trust is the basis of community and that people must be able to trust one another in politics, commerce, and battle. The bottom line, when you think about it, trust is confidence in the character or behavior of another in regard to predictability, reliability, dependability, integrity, or, 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 or and in regard to regularity. Trust is confidence. I don't always have to rethink that. I know he'll always be late. So I always give him a time earlier than the time he has to be there. I know I don't have to look up a good restaurant because he knows them off the top of his head. Um, uh, I know, I, I, I just, I used this example today, I just thought of my sweet mother-in-law. She was a wonderful person, she really was, but she was the most wretched cook on God's green earth. <laughs> and it was always late, and it was always cold, just to have a trilogy effect. So I always got there late and ate early at home before, you know, and then moved the food around the plate. I could depend upon it, right? And we have those people in life, good or bad, absolutely good or bad. You, you know you could go... And that's why in, in business, when you think about this, and maybe this has happened to you, that you're really busy and your boss comes to you with another task. Why? Because you are busy and you fulfill the task and he knows he can depend upon you. And besides, and by the way, another bona fide in my regard, I am Catholic, Italian, and Jewish, so I have guilt coming and going. And besides, he lays the guilt trip on you. because Oh my God, I can't do this. Oh, all right, all right, all right. I'm depending upon you, Martha. Can you get that? All right, all right, all right. And you do it. Okay. 
So this is dependability. And th this little definition really is the basis for how we deal with people. I could de depend my brother's always going to be late. I could depend we're going to have this fight every time we get together. I think trust within a social network creates the reasonable expectations of civility and predictability in regard to each other. Trust allows us to increase the complexity and the richness of our lives. And without trust, our relationships are incoherent and uncoordinated. So I think, to me, trust is an essential tool that leaders have to give to their constituents or this essential relationship that they want to build with that. And maybe the negative way to explain it, don't you start to absolutely tremble when a politician gets in front of a mic and says, now let me be perfectly honest with you about this. <laughs> the first thing I think of is, if he doesn't say, or she doesn't say, let me be perfectly honest to you about this, then they're automatically lying, right? And, and so I think that, you know, oh my God, it, it, what's he going to tell us? Now, although much of popular literature refers to trust as a lubricant, here's the one little thing uh, that, uh, that I feel is important. Uh, uh, they refer to it as a lubricant or a glue or, or something that holds things together. I don't think trust is an entity. I don't think it's a cement. I don't think it's a one-time epoxy. I think trust is neither static or inert. I think trust is a living relationship that we must continue to cultivate through conversation, commitment, and action. I think trust is an active part of our lives. Trust is an option that we have to reinforce and maintain. Trust is something we do. Like love, you have to reaffirm it to sustain it. Otherwise, it goes away. And you can trust the politician for a long time, and then boom, what happens? It falls off the block, you know. Bush, two, Bush one had a 97 rating after the Persian Gulf War. He left the office with a 17. No more taxes, read my lips. And what did he do? Raise the taxes. And that was that. Uh, and so in a very real sense, trust is something that you create and you have to maintain, just like you maintain a friendship. Don't call up a friend for four years. Is that your friend? No, I don't think so either. A friend that lies to you on a regular basis? Was that your former friend? Yes, indeed. Um, I think trust like love doesn't happen to us. It's a choice. We don't just fall in love, hopefully not. I think we fall in lust all too easily. But love is another dimension of a relationship. When we learn about someone. We choose to love. And I think we choose to trust because it's a risk. You make yourself vulnerable. I think trust is neither a birthright or a gift we could depend on, nor does it last forever. It has to be earned. It has to be maintained. And like love, trust dies if it is not cared for and, and, and maintained. I think bottom line is, without trust, neither civility, conviviality, commerce, finance, morality, or politics are possible. And I think the problem is we don't trust our politicians. And we have reason for that.